In the next year, you're gonna want to build a bow tie marketing strategy. Don't believe me? Keep watching. Today, we're gonna to be talking about all the digital marketing channels that you need to be using over the next year. But first, this bow tie thing. There's a marketing funnel that's becoming pretty popular called the bow tie funnel, and we think it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's cool. Bow ties are cool. The basic idea is that you bring in website traffic through one side of the funnel. Your loyal customers then bring in traffic through the other side of the funnel, either as repeat business or by spreading the word about your brand. So it's kind of like two funnels pointing at each other, making the two ends of the bow tie. Then in the middle, you track all of your traffic and improve this funnel to optimize both ends. But the problem is there are so many different marketing funnels and different models these days. And like all of them, this one comes with its own bunch of terminology. So we're gonna simplify it by mixing it with the Bofu Mofu Tofu funnel. So our bow tie funnel is more like this. Top of funnel traffic, middle of funnel traffic, bottom of funnel traffic, all in the front end funnel part of the bow tie. Improve in the middle, retain and brand advocates in the back end part of the funnel. To be honest, I already feel like the retention and advocate part is smaller than the tofu mofu bofu. So actually it's not really a bow tie, it's kind of a wonky fish shape. It's a fish funnel. Okay, that's enough about funnels. How does this funnel, fishy or not, really help you with your marketing and help you build a killer strategy for the next 12 months? First up, some prerequisites. Any good marketing strategy begins with some great branding and positioning, a hardworking website, and a solid AI mindset. And if you're wondering what an AI mindset is, we'll come back to that soon. But your positioning and branding is a key part of any marketing activity that you do and governs the success of anything that you put out. It helps the people at the top of the funnel understand what you're offering, the middle of the funnel understand why they should buy from you rather than others, and it helps the people at the bottom of the funnel to convert. Branding and positioning also helps you build that connection with your existing customers and gives them a reason to advocate for your brand. So you need to make sure that your marketing is crystal clear about how you're different from competitors. Now your positioning doesn't necessarily need to be anything groundbreaking. It can be as simple as being customer service focused in an industry that isn't particularly renowned for its customer service. Or you can be focused on sustainability, or maybe it's being independent and family owned. The important thing here is to find a difference about you that is meaningful to your customers. Next, you need a website that is designed for conversions. Yes, it needs to look good, but it needs to be working hard. It needs to be effective at turning visitors into leads or sales for you. How do you do this? Well, one of the first things that you can do is explain really clearly exactly what you do on your homepage straight above the fold. Not like this. <laughs> There is nothing about the above the fold section on this website that tells you what this business does or who it's for. Sure, there's a time to be clever and cryptic, but it's not on your website. So if you're an estate agent for luxury properties, just say luxury property estate agent rather than start your amazing life to fulfillment or some other drivel. Next, check out your CTAs, your calls to action to make sure that they're compelling to visitors and they sufficiently incentivize the click. Look here how Cooker offers a virtual appointment with a 99 pound discount which is way more compelling than talk to sales, even though that's basically what it is. Another business that uses virtual consultations very well on their website is Stana. Notice here how they handle the potential objections someone might have. They explain the process and how it works and they seek to de-risk every element of the CTA for the potential customer. Now, of course, you don't have to offer a free consultation. You can offer a free download, a guide, a demo, a trial product purchase, but whatever it is, firstly, make sure that it's attractive enough to people, but then also make sure that it's relevant to people at that stage of the funnel. For example, someone at the top of the funnel who's just starting to research the process, they're not gonna be ready to book a demonstration or an in-person appointment yet, but they might be ready to read some guides or watch a video or learn more about how your business works. For example, look at this content from sportswear company Gymshark. This is top of funnel content. This isn't people searching for workout clothing, but it's people who might be interested in buying workout clothing. The topic is, should you have a protein shake before bed? Here's what the science says to build more muscle. And this is a great, well-researched piece with some original images. It's a decent piece of content. What Gymshark is hoping is that someone reads this and thinks, ah, oh, Gymshark's a really helpful brand. Maybe I should buy some of their clothing. Now, if they were gonna take this content to the next level, it would be great to add some CTAs to top of funnel conversion goals. For example, download the Gymshark fitness app or download some workout guides or download some example meal plans. These are all calls to action that will be of interest to someone who's at this stage of the funnel and they would help Gymshark to get that customer's details so they could do follow-up marketing to them. So what about someone who's at the other end of the funnel, someone who's already purchased and you either want to incentivize them to repurchase 
or share with their friends. Well, this person's gonna be interested in a different type of content. They might want to see behind the scenes of new product launches or how a particular product range has been designed. They might wanna hear from their favorite influencers who wear Gymshark products. For this audience, Gymshark has built an app as a way of having a connection to that audience right on the home screen. Now we're gonna be exploring the different types of content that you might wanna have for different stages of the funnel later on. But first, let's talk about this AI mindset that I mentioned at the start. This isn't a video about AI. If we did wanna make it about use of AI in marketing, this video could easily be twice as long. We've got loads of other videos on AI and marketing on this channel. So you probably wanna subscribe. But over the next year, it's gonna be incredibly important to understand how AI is gonna impact search and how your competitors might start using AI in their marketing. Now we've got other videos that go into this in more detail, but I would make AI a core part of your digital marketing strategy over the next year. Whether it's deciding to spend more on paid search or expand into other channels or get to grips with Google's SGE. Maybe it's spending a bit longer checking out your competitors and seeing what they're running for their display ads to see if they're using AI generated images in them. The reason I think it's important to build AI into your marketing strategy for the next year is that even if you're not actually planning on using it, understanding where the challenges and disruptions are going to come from is going to be really important. We see a number of areas like search where there are going to be land grab opportunities for businesses that really embrace it and figure out how to use the latest AI products. All right, so back to this thing. What are some of the digital marketing channels that you're going to want to use in each part of this funnel? We're going to start with the SEO part of your strategy. With AI search on the horizon and Google rolling out its search generative experience, SEO is actually gonna be more important than ever. But the way you think about SEO might need to change a little bit. Let's have a look. Historically, SEO has been all about getting your website ranked in the blue links on Google. Well, now we've got this massive section at the top, which is actually taking away a whole bunch of the informational search traffic. Over the next year, you're gonna to need to make sure that your website is showing up in these spaces. Now, generative AI is particularly good at answering who, how, why, and what questions. So you're gonna to need to make sure you're putting out a good amount of very authoritative content on these topics so that you've got a chance of being linked to by Google when it's answering these sorts of questions. There are other changes going on in the search results like Google's tendency to show more user-generated content from sites like Reddit and Quora, showing videos in the Perspectives tab. The rules of the game in SEO are changing, and if you're going to be competing in the search results over the next year, you're going to need to dedicate some serious time to keeping up to date with what's going on. Or you can get some help from the team here at Exposure Ninja. We have a service called the World Famous Free Website and Marketing Review, where we'll take a look at your website, your digital marketing, and the plans that you've got and we'll help you put together a prioritized action plan that you can follow over the next six to 12 months to significantly increase the volume of leads and sales that your website is generating for you, including from SEO. So go to ExposureNinja.com forward slash review to apply, and if you qualify, we'll send you your video review usually within two to three working days. Totally free, no catch. That's a CTA. Anyway, let's go back to this bow tie, fish, fish tie funnel thing. Let's think about people who are at the top of the funnel, right at the start of their purchase journey. The types of content that you're producing need to suit where a person is at in their journey. So for example, someone right at the top of the funnel who's early on in their research might just want a short answer to their question, whereas someone who is further down the funnel is gonna want a more longer, detailed answer. Someone searching for, for example, what is hummus, they're gonna be pretty happy with the answer that they get straight from the meta description here. Whereas someone searching for how do I make hummus is gonna want a much more in-depth piece of content, possibly an entire recipe. Now in the past, Google tended to prioritize longer, more detailed content for all searches, meaning that if you search for what is hummus, you'd get a really long detailed answer with a whole bunch of preamble blah before you actually got to the answer you were looking for. But in reality, you probably don't want the writer's entire life story with their memories of the first time they tried hummus. But as Google evolves and understands more about user behavior, it's happy to prioritize shorter content for search queries that warrant it. Now, this might mean that over the next year, you may want to revisit some of the content that you've published on your website. The way to check how long and how detailed a piece of content should be if you're trying to rank it through SEO is to go and run some searches. Have a look at the sort of content that's actually ranking for those searches. That will give you a really good idea of what Google wants to see and what it wants to reward. Don't forget the content that you publish doesn't have to directly be about your product and service. It's important to start with your customer in mind and think about the questions and problems they might have. 
For example, look at this article from Purely Pets all about how to enjoy traveling abroad with your dog. I did not know you could put them in the suitcase, but there you go. This is a really long and detailed guide. The call to action that they use at the end is for their dog insurance lifetime cover. But this isn't a pet travel company, this is a pet insurance company. So how do they monetize this traffic? Well, they've got a call to action at the end advertising their insurance because their insurance covers dogs worldwide. So someone who may not have even been a potential customer for this insurance product is now looking at this thinking about taking their dog abroad and Purely Pets has done a great job of positioning their insurance as a solution to the customer's problem that they might not have even realized they have yet. Now if they wanted extra ninja bonus points they could have included a CTA for a downloadable travel checklist or something like that. If they were really feeling bright they would have then put those people in an automated email sequence giving them tips on how to travel abroad with their dog including frequent calls to action to buy their pet travel insurance. Now that's the top of funnel traffic but what about the bottom of funnel traffic the stuff that's more likely to convert that's ready to make a purchase? Well of course as well as having information content on your website you're going to want to optimize your key pages whether that's optimizing pages to rank for quotation term or key commercial terms that you know your potential customers are going to be searching for right before they make a purchase okay so that's the front end of your funnel but what about the back end of your funnel remember this is the traffic that you want to turn into repeat purchase and brand advocates well, this is where things like building a referral program can make a lot of sense. But you might also want to give your customers advice on how to get the most from your products, knowing that this is going to improve their satisfaction, which is going to increase the likelihood of them recommending you to others. Check out how Lucy and Yak does this by giving their customers a care guide. The message here is that they care about you once you've bought the product. And that's a pretty good message to share. Now, this type of content is going to be supported by your mailing list and your pay-per-click ads, which we're going to come back to later. Another part of your strategy that you're going to want to use to connect with customers at all stages of the funnel is social media. Now social can be great for connecting with people at the top of the funnel, building a relationship with them and pushing them down towards conversion or nudging them towards conversion. Now it's important that when you're choosing your priority social media channels and not everything can be a priority, you understand where your customers spend their time. Don't just go for the channels that you personally spend the most time on because you might not be your customer. Here's a great example of that. The charity Become works with Twitch streamers to encourage them to run charity streams to raise money. So what did they do? Well, they set up their own Discord server because they know that that's where the streamers spend their time. And they built this awesome page for this target audience, knowing that this is exactly the sort of design that's going to resonate with that target customer. They have dedicated case studies from this audience, and they've essentially built an entire separate marketing funnel for this customer group. Now, speaking of social media, influencer marketing and user-generated content on social channels could be a key battleground going forward. This is because of Google Perspectives, a new search filter that Google is rolling out, which prioritizes video content from individual social media users, as well as answers from people on Reddit and Quora and other forum sites. And this maps to a wider search trend. Nearly 40% of Gen Z uses Instagram and TikTok to search for things over Google for exactly this reason. So Google's Perspectives filter is their attempt to fight back and capture this audience. It brings together all these types of content from all of these different platforms and gives searchers a central place to find individual people's perspectives on whatever search topic they're looking for. The next component of your strategy in the next year is gonna be pay-per-click, and in particular, search ads. With AI projected to become a larger part of search, we're expecting more businesses to put budget, time, and energy into search ads as a way of counteracting for any traffic that they've lost to generative AI search results. But we can also see a new standard approaching for pay-per-click ads. With Google rolling generative AI features into its paid search products, we're expecting to see the worst quality paid search ads improve slightly. Now that's great for businesses that were previously churning out the worst possible ads, but for everyone else, this means that the quality of your ads needs to improve even further to stand out from the mass of AI generated stuff that's gonna be flooding the net. Now, as well as the ad creative that you're gonna be running, you'll also need to think about what stage of the buyer journey or the marketing funnel someone is at when they're making that search. Most advertisers only focus their ads on people who are ready to make a purchase right now, because those are 
are the ones that turn most quickly into money. But actually there can be a lot of profit to be made from targeting visitors at the top of the funnel, those that are asking questions and will later become customers. That's because whilst these people might be less likely to make a purchase right now, if you can get them on your email list or you can run remarketing and retargeting ads to them, you can actually guide them through the purchase process. And because they're searching for very informational phrases, the cost of getting that person onto your website in the first place can be very low. Now we've created an entire video on how pay-per-click is gonna work over the next year, link in the description. Email marketing is and will continue to be an incredibly important channel over the next year, but only if you use it correctly. And by correctly, I mean making use of segmentation and automation. Now automated emails, i.e. streams of emails set to go out over a particular frequency, are great for top of funnel visitors. They've come onto your website, they've requested some information or they've downloaded something, and you can create a stream that warms them up gradually over a series of emails that you write. It's a predefined stream. You set it, you forget it, it can run for years. But automation can also be great for targeting people at the bottom of the funnel based on the actions that they're taking on your website. For example, let's say that they filled out a form on your website to find and compare local estate agents. That person is going to want a different type of email to someone who's downloaded a checklist for selling their home. This person is much closer to that purchase, to that decision. So they're gonna want things like advice on how to choose, or maybe even just the contact details of some relevant local estate agents if they're ready to make a purchase right now. Okay, so what about segmentation? Well, segmentation is splitting your customer email list into groups based on their purchase history, their behavior, the type of customer that they are. And it can be great to keep customers coming back again and again. Check out this email from You Need A Budget. It's really simple. It's basically just a nudge to get someone to come back and make a purchase. Sometimes it can be that easy. So don't just send blanket emails to everyone. All of our email inboxes are getting smarter. And as they're watching which emails we ignore, more of your emails are gonna end up in that dreaded promotion tab if you're not sending the sorts of things that your customers actually want to engage with. Now, it wouldn't be an Exposure Ninja's strategy video if we didn't talk about the importance of digital PR. And we expect digital PR to become even more important over the next year because of AI. People will be looking for information in new ways, just like through Perspectives Filter. And when Google is referencing high authority sites to put together its AI answers, guess what? You need to be being found on those high authority sites. Because of this, if you haven't started using digital PR yet, this is your time to start. Again, let's go back to this bow tie fish funnel thing. Digital PR can be a great way of getting on the radar of people at the top of the funnel people who haven't come across you before. Getting featured in the publications that they're reading is a really high authority way of breaking through into their consciousness. Digital PR can be serious, it can be data and studies about customer behaviors, or it can be lighthearted and fun, like this piece from Compare the Market, which asks the question, which UK city has the dirtiest cars? Now, of course, I don't wanna make the video about this PR piece, but their conclusion is that the cities where their cars are clean the least have the dirtiest cars, but I'd say maybe it's the opposite. If your car's not dirty, you don't need to get it cleaned. The reason that people are getting their cars cleaned in London is because they're dirty, all right? Anyway! Now, what does the story about dirty cars have to do with selling car insurance like Compare the Market is trying to do? Well, nothing really, but it's designed to get media coverage, which is designed to get people talking about Compare the Market and, importantly, to get links for Compare the Market from high authority websites and newspaper sites. And this is gonna help their website ranking on Google for those super competitive search terms around car insurance. We released a video about how digital PR is gonna be super important in the future, so link in the description to that one. Okay, so we've looked at a whole bunch of different strategies for both the front end funnel, how you're gonna get new people to your business, and also the back end funnel, how you're gonna turn those people into repeat customers and eventually advocates. But there's one more piece of the puzzle, bow tie, and that's that middle section. And this is where you start thinking about how all of these different parts of your strategy intertwine and relate to each other. So for example, when you're writing and publishing that content on your blog targeting the top of funnel, how are you using that content on your social media? Are you taking out key quotes and using them as bite-sized chunks? Are you sending these articles to your subscribers through your email marketing? And if so, which segments 
how often and when. Then of course, how does all this stuff overlay with your product strategy if you're releasing a new product halfway through the year? Will you be running a digital PR campaign to promote that product? How will you be building up your pay-per-click campaign to support that product launch? And will you be sending all of that pay-per-click traffic to the product page or will you also create informational content about that product which you can drive top of funnel traffic to? How can you activate your brand advocates and your existing customer base to help you promote this? Can you build a customer loyalty scheme? Can you incentivize your brand advocates to share your social media content somehow? So the concept behind this bow tie funnel is yes, you've got these two funnels for the front end and the back end, but you're also working out how to connect everything, how to combine these channels and use them across different types of customer. So I hope that's given you some things to think about as you prepare your marketing strategy for the next year. If you want some advice on the best types of content to produce and how to use these across different channels, check out this video, which is the ultimate content marketing playbook. Don't forget to request your free website and marketing review from the team at Exposure Ninja. Just go to ExposureNinja.com forward slash review and I'll see you next time.